How are you? I am so happy to be with you all, as always. It looks like my Facebook connection. Let's see. Okay. I think I am actively live right now. Yes. Here we go. Everybody's rolling on. Hi. How are you? I am, as always, so happy and excited to be with you guys. I'm Amy Raup of amyraup.com. Welcome to all the newbies um, on Instagram and on Facebook. I am honored to be a part of your health team. So thank you so much for coming to me for advice and inspiration. And those of you that are new to me, you can learn everything about me on my website, amyraup.com. I have been practicing um, helping women really, but everyone, anyone, um, reawaken their health for about 20 years. And yeah, I've been at it a long time and I have 16 years of clinical experience under my belt as an acupuncturist and practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine. I've written several books and, you know, my, my jam is helping women take back the power over their health and helping them realize how much power they have over their health and understanding that health is mental, emotional, physical, and nutritional. Um, so a big shout out if you guys get what I'm talking about. Um, hi, Pashia. Thank you. You're welcome. Whitney, Katie. Hey, guys. Um, if you guys want to, yeah, I see everybody rolling on. So great. I love it. So the topic of today's conversation is, yes, Erica says, I love it, is, um, is Mother's Day depressing you? Yeah, it's coming up. It's in the, in the States, that is. It's this weekend. Um, in outside of the States, I know, I think it was earlier in Australia, and I know there's different dates, but... So this can apply to anyone at any time whenever you Mother's Day comes up in your country. But for us in the U.S., which is where most of my followers are, although we do reach everyone across the world now, um, Mother's Day is happening this weekend. And so I, a couple years ago, wrote a book called Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. And it has put me on the map as one of the nation's leading um, alternative fertility experts. And it reaches women all over the world. And I have the honor and pleasure of working with women all over the world to help them optimize their fertility so that they can get and stay pregnant. But in that process, I am also really helping women manage through the grief and the sadness that their life didn't unfold exactly how they had hoped. That conceiving a child or growing their family um, or finding their partner or, you know, any of those things didn't happen the, on the timeline that they had hoped for or in the way that they had hoped. And, you know, this, this journey has brought up a lot of sadness and, and you know, has brought on trauma and how to unpack that, you know, as I said before, because health is not just the lab work, right? It is not just, you know, um, if you're dealing with fertility challenges, it's not your FSH and your AMH. It's not how many follicles are in your ovaries. It's it's mental, emotional, physical, and nutritional. And all of those things need to come together in order for fertility to thrive. And, and as I always say, your fertility is an extension of your health. Um, so, you know, unpacking that emotional piece is really, really important. And, you know, I just want to say right here, right now to all those women that Mother's Day is a trigger for that I honor you. I get it. I was there once too, you know, um, although I didn't have challenges conceiving my son when I was 40. Um, I have recently had a miscarriage, which is, you know, sad and I've been public about and have shared quite a bit about on my journey and I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. Um, but for years prior to meeting my husband and prior to having my own children, I, I desperately wanted a family and mother's day, you know, I would focus on my mother. I would focus on my sister-in-law. I would, I would shift my focus as much as I could to celebrate them, but it definitely made me feel less than. I felt like I was lacking something that everyone else had. I felt like I didn't have what I wanted and what was wrong with me. Why am I not where I want to be? And, you know, that was a real challenge for me. And, you know, so I can relate. 
I can relate a lot. And I also think right now during, you know, the stay at home quarantine time, um, Mother's Day may impact us in a, in a very different way, too, that we can't even surround ourselves with loved ones that would maybe be a distraction. And so what can we do? Um, you know, how can we let's see. Oh, Wisconsin. Look at this. Shamali. Hello. I see people on Facebook commenting. And Mary, how are you? Yeah, and, and I, I'd love to hear from you guys, too, of like what your plans are for coping, what you've done in the past for coping, um, or even ask me specific questions on coping. Because I think Mother's Day doesn't just bring up, um, it doesn't just trigger the women who are trying to conceive. It triggers the women who have maybe have children, but have had other losses or have lost their mother or their grandmother or another mother figure in their life. So it's it's very triggering for many people because it's um, it just inevitably creates this environment of feeling left out or feeling like, or even you might be a new mother and you might've had a struggle or a journey to get there and you're not feeling all the feels that you thought you'd be feeling on Mother's Day, maybe, you're stressed about that. Maybe you feel guilty about that. Maybe that's depressing you. Maybe you're dealing with some postpartum challenges, right? There's a lot of ways that a holiday like this can trigger us. And so I wanted to come to you guys and, and first of all, just say it's okay. I think it's really okay to be wherever you are at. And so the first thing I want us all to do is to honor the situation, honor our feelings. So what does that mean? It means let yourself feel all the feelings without feeling guilty for feeling all the feelings. Let yourself feel all the feelings without judging or thinking that you shouldn't feel them because you're on Instagram and everybody else looks so damn happy on Mother's Day and you're miserable. Um, and so what's wrong with me, right? What, look, what is that question? Um, Shamali, how do I cope with my friends who have kids who ask me when I'm going to have kids? How do I feel this discussion without parroting out the OBGYN's prognosis about my fertility? So I think um, I think that's this is a good time to answer that question. Um, I think it's a really good question. And I think the thing you say, it's it's really depends on your comfort level, um, is just, you know, we're working on it. Um, we really do want to have a family. I think you you be honest and because you never know like I, I learned that with going honest uh, going honest being honest and public about my miscarriage was how how scary it was and how vulnerable it was and awkward just flat out awkward and it just kind of sucked to be honest that I was that open and honest in the beginning it was really painful and then it became very obvious to me that it was the most necessary thing I could have ever done for my healing um, but the second you open up and share, people wind up sharing their story. So you might actually feel less alone. So I would say, um, and you might say, well, I know their stories and they didn't struggle and all these things, but like maybe they had other struggles or maybe they've lost a mom. Maybe they're too feeling depressed about Mother's Day. You don't know. And people are trying to make conversation and maybe they're trying to find a way to support you too. And I always, you know, reflect back on, I think the fact that everyone's doing the best they can from their level of consciousness. So just share, just say, oh, if someone says, so do you guys plan to have children? Yeah, we're working on it. You know, um, we're having some challenges. We're working on it. Or, um, yeah, I hope I have good news to share soon. Or I don't feel like talking about that right now. I'm feeling a little sad. Maybe that's okay too, right? Um, I've coped by focusing on my mom too. I've also used the day to pamper myself if I don't see my mom. Other years I've just done something fun, exactly. Um, due to me being 40, what kind of treatments can you offer me help get pregnant? Um, so Claire, I would just direct you to my website. Right now we're talking about, you know, how coping with Mother's Day is important, but you can check out my book, Claire, my book called Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. It's a, it's a best-selling book on fertility, and that could be really helpful. That's a good place to start. I also got pregnant naturally at 40, um, so I know it's possible. And then I got pregnant naturally again at 44. Um, so... But coping, you know, going back to this space of, okay, so first, the first step in coping is we must honor our feelings. We must acknowledge it. And I think that's just saying to yourself, yeah, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling anxious as Mother's Day approaches. I'm feeling depressed as Mother's Day approaches because of all that I've been through, right? And like, 
don't try to talk yourself out of your not so great emotions because you think maybe it's bad for you to experience them or it's going to make things worse. Like I think it makes it worse if we don't own them. So we don't have to try and fix them. I just want you to own them. I feel depressed as Mother's Day is coming on, or I feel anxious, I feel sad, I feel angry, I feel left out, I feel broken. Whatever it is, I want you to honor it. Um, I, that's the biggest thing. And I see Anne Mary saying, I hate that question from people, you know, when are you going to have kids? I really think it's to give yourself the space and grace to say, hey, we're working on it. You know, it's a sensitive topic. Maybe another time, you know, maybe over a cup of tea in private, I could share with you what I've been going through. You know, put it back on them in a sense, but also in a way that like you really honor yourself instead of you're sinking in and you're letting their question that is maybe to them a seamless, painful, painless question hurt you. You're taking it really personally. And they might not mean it that way, you know. So instead, I think you you step into your power and you say, yeah, we're working on it. I'd really like to grow my family. It's scary as shit to admit to it because in there you have shame that it hasn't yet happened for you and it's triggering that. And so, but I think the second you open up to talk about it, you might get more resources. You might actually welcome in more support. And when you don't want to talk about it, I want you to ask yourself, well, why am I blocking or resisting their support? Um, Kelly, hope you're good. Yeah. Oh, hi, guys. Everybody's just saying hi to each other. I've lost two pregnancies, and I never know how to respond when someone asks, are you a mom? Um, and again, it's up to you how much you want to share. I think I think the easiest answer is, yeah, we're 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 planning to grow our family. We're hoping to grow our family. Um, we've had some challenges. If that feels good for you to say, we've had some challenges. Then the, the person might turn around and be like, oh, you know, I had a miscarriage before our first. Um, and then you might feel all of a sudden a sense of connection to someone that you were immediately judging, thinking that they didn't understand where you were at, right? But how can anyone understand? They're not mind readers unless we share, right? But first, let's just focus on ourselves. Honor. So maybe it's taking 10 minutes this weekend and sitting and writing out all your feelings of sadness or feelings of loss, feelings of grief, feelings of anger. And again, that could be over your own miscarriages, your own fertility journey, your own weight for your partner, the loss of a mother figure or your very own mother, right? Or that you're, you didn't have the relationship with your mom that you wished you had. Anything that comes up, I want you to really sit and honor it and feel it. Feel all of the feelings. The only way to shift is you got to acknowledge those feelings. So they have to come up and out. And I think journaling is a great way to do that. I think um, crying, you know, singing, dancing, get it out. Process. We must process the grief and the trauma that is in there in order for us to change the trajectory of our life. We can't keep it stagnant inside of us. It becomes toxic and it can be very harmful to the body, to your hormones, um, to so many things. We now know so much research and I talk about this in my latest book, In Body Belief. There's a lot of research that our, our thoughts not only dictate our behavior, which dictates our health, but our thoughts are dictating our physiology and the chemicals in our body and they're impacting our hormones or impacting our stress response, and they are impacting our overall health. And so the best way to do that is we we really need to acknowledge our feelings. Um, I was born on Mother's Day and had a late silent miscarriage three years ago. It's just super demoralizing. My birthday is just another reminder of my loss and my subsequent infertility struggles. So that's it, Celeste. A, I send you so much love. And 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 B, I give you a lot of credit that you're here and you just shared. So bravo to you. And I just think, you know, give yourself the time to sit and grieve. 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 You too are a mother to a spirit baby. And that is sad that they're not in the physical flesh as of yet. And so I want you to be able to sit with that and honor that. And, and then another thing is remember, you know, so the first thing is to really acknowledge and 
honor your feelings, right? To go there, go to the dark place, write out the dark words, write out all the feelings you are feeling, get them out of you, put them into something. Maybe it's a letter that you write to the unborn child or to the child you lost. Maybe there's a ritual you do to help yourself grieve that loss, right? Honor those feelings. And then the next thing is to remind yourself that comparison is the root of all suffering. So you don't know everyone's story and you might see the highlight reel on their social media that makes you feel less than or lacking, but remind yourself two things. Everyone's doing the best they can from their level of consciousness and that you don't know their story. And one day, it is my hope for you, that you were that woman happily posting about your family on Mother's Day. And there might be some girl who's in your shoes right now looking at that post and feeling less than. So have compassion for yourself right now. Have compassion for your friends that are posting because you don't know how badly they wanted this child or for how long. And you know that we don't know everyone's story. So let's not judge. And the way to stop judging first and foremost is we have to stop judging ourselves. We have to lower our own criticism of ourselves considering, you know, thinking about like, I'm not where I thought I would be. So to grieve that, that space in your life my life didn't turn out exactly how I thought it was going to. I'm not, I haven't given up hope yet, but to, to grieve that, oh, it's taken a couple turns that I didn't expect. Let yourself feel that like the, you energetically in order to shift. And I think spiritually in order to shift and in order to move forward in life. And you're never going to, you know, forget. Like, I think some of us hold on to grief because we're afraid to forget. You're not going to forget the loss. You're not, you know, so just, but how much space are you letting it take up in your life? So can you forgive yourself for continuing to carry it? Can you forgive yourself for thinking you need to hold on to it really tight because now it's defining you? Do you want this loss to define you? Or do you want to focus on all the shifts you have made in your life and where your life is headed and you know the things that you do have to celebrate? Can we Can we shift that focus? Can we focus on... How are we, okay, that we sat and we honored our feelings and we acknowledged them, right? Can we focus on that? Can we give ourselves a pat on the back? You know, Celeste, you get a pat on the back right now for just honoring that loss. And then the next thing is, you know, to, to look at how am I judging myself? How am I judging others? How am I comparing? How am I focused on lack? And then to shift, what do I have to be grateful for in my life? Can I focus on a couple women in my life that are awesome moms that I want to be like one day when I'm a mom? Do I have a great mom that I can celebrate and shift the focus or a sister-in-law or a sister or a cousin? Try to shift the focus. And then most importantly, to, to look at how are you nourishing you? I do believe one of the fastest ways to energetically, spiritually manifest a child is to learn how to mother and nurture yourself. You must mother and nurture yourself. You can't depend on other people to do it. You can't depend on that child to give you a reason for being. You must be your reason for being. Nourishing you needs to be that top priority. And nourishing you means listening and honoring all those feelings, letting yourself grieve, asking yourself, how does holding on to this story serve me at this point? Why have I let this fertility challenge or these struggles define me? And how can I tell a better story? How can I begin to shift that story? How can I begin to say to people with confidence when they ask me, are you planning to grow a family? Are you planning to have children? Yeah, we've been trying. We're hoping to grow our family soon. How can I say that with confidence, not with shame, not with fear? How can I say that with confidence? Yeah, I'm hoping maybe next Mother's Day I'll be able to be in this club, right? Be easy on yourself. Less judgment, more grace, more compassion. And the only way to get to that compassion and grace for yourself is you've got to honor how you feel. And I think even more, you got to forgive. And forgive means to forgive, to hand it over, to surrender. I've carried this burden of loss. I've carried this burden of struggle long enough. It's time for a new story. I'm ready to give birth to a new story. And that's something else to focus on. 
what else are you giving birth to in your life, right? Is making this baby your primary focus? Is healing from the miscarriage your primary focus? Is grieving the loss of someone or something, a mother figure, a child, um, a relationship, uh, you know, is that the primary focus? Are you really deep down in it and has it become your story? Are you letting other things excite you? Are you letting other things in? What else are you giving birth to? Is it a letter that you write to your spirit baby? Is it, you know, um, something you create? Is it a garden you start? Is it, you know, like what else are you giving birth to? Maybe it's a blog. Maybe you start sharing pieces of your story with others. What else are you giving birth to? A really important question to ask yourself. Oh, Celeste, you're making me cry. Well, you're welcome, Celeste. I struggle with Mother's Day every year because I lost my mom nine years ago to, to cancer. I lost my dad nine years ago. It'll be 10 to cancer as well. Um, also losing my third little one to miscarriage in 2018. It's really depressing and hurting feelings. I mean, don't get me wrong, spending Mother's Day with all um, uh, my other two kiddos is great. My husband and I have been currently working on conception, but we deal with a lot of stress to figure out how to cope with infertility and more. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this, this conversation is perfect for you, Katie. And it is it's like grieving the losses, your mother, the miscarriage, you know, grieving that, grieving that life handed you some things that you didn't expect, honoring all the feelings, and then asking yourself, like, what am I willing to let go of? Am I willing to carry this burden much further? How have I let it define me? How am I letting my beliefs that I'm I'm struggling, that I'm never going to be a mom, or I'm, the lackfulness that I'm I'm comparing myself to others? How am I letting that define me, and and make you know my purpose in life? And and am I willing to start to see that differently? Am I open to the possibilities of things changing? Um, I feel like some people judge by my age when I say we're working on it. Yeah, I hear you. Me too. Um, I just remind them, you know, um, I do have some people who are experts in the field who believe it's possible for me and I'm working with them. I don't need your opinion about my age. Um, but people will always find something to judge. Exactly, Beth. I think that's it. Um, you know, I, I, I do think, but I think too in there is, and you know, I say this lovingly and I say this lovingly to myself too. It's a reflection of your own judgment of yourself. And so that fear is a reflection of your own judgment of yourself. So you need to forgive that. You need to come to terms with the fact that you're whatever age you are and you're still hopeful and still actively trying. You need to forgive that piece. You need to own it. It is what it is. This is where we are right? You're either in or you're out. Um, and so we have to own our feelings, all of them, the good, the bad, the ugly. We got to own them. We got to acknowledge them, let them up and out. And then we ask ourselves, how are they serving me? How are they, am I letting them define me? And then how am I letting them define how I look at the world, how I compare myself, how I'm focused on the lack? And then what in my life am I giving birth to? What in my life have I created that I'm proud of? I do that a lot. I look around when I'm feeling lackful. I look around at all the things that I have created and I say, I created that and I created that and I'm proud of that and I created that. There's got to be a few things that you've created in your life that you are proud of. You can focus on that. And then you can ask yourself, and what else am I giving birth to? Maybe it's a career shift. Maybe it's, you know, you're working on a home project. Maybe it's a garden. Maybe you're knitting something. Maybe you're writing something. What else are you giving birth to? Focus on that. Focus on the energy of creation. That's where children come from, the energy of creation. And then ask yourself, how am I nourishing and nurturing myself? The best way to get into the energy of becoming a mother is to mother yourself. It's the biggest thing I see is the issue with these fertility challenges is women don't slow down enough to take care of themselves. They're so busy taking care of everything else and everything superficial and I'll slow down and I'll mother somebody when I get the baby. No, I'll be happy when I get the baby. No, I'll take care of myself when I'm pregnant. No, no, mother and nurture yourself. And remember health is mental, it's emotional, it's physical, it's nutritional. Some of you might have the diet and the supplements down pat, but you're not looking at the emotional pieces. That could be the hiccup, that could be the block. Um. 
Okay, let me see. What I'm dealing with now, our IUI was put on hold for the pandemic, but after endometriitis, double rounds of antibiotic, my fertility doctor said I can try naturally too. Um, but now I'm scared to get pregnant because of the pandemic. Hubby and me lost our jobs had to sign up for Medicaid. So now I'm like, now is it a scary time? That's a scary time for everyone. And I think safety is a huge thing. And I, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the safety conversation. So I, I would urge you to go back to that conversation. But, um, you know, I, my dad would always say there's never a right time to make a baby. If you wait for the right time, you might never do it, you know. So to if this is something you want and sex doesn't feel forced um, and it feels organic and fun, then I think you go through it. Um, and I think, you know, be easy on yourself. My Sharon, everyone keeps wishing me a happy first Mother's Day, um, but I feel wrong th thinking it's my first I agree. When I've had four early miscarriages, I feel like it's betraying my babies that didn't make it because they existed, even though it was only for a short time. How do I honor being a mom to those babies while also celebrating my relationship with my daughter? I love that so much. It made me cry. Um, I think that's what you do. I just think you maybe do a ritual to honor them and say, you know, this is the first um, baby of mine that has made it into the physical form. And I am so honored to hold her and be with her. But um, I will always carry, you know, all of you with me. I'm the mother to all of you. And remember too, from a spiritual perspective, it might've been the same child trying to come through all those times. So you might not, you might actually have that spirit with you in the flesh right now, but I still think you should just honor it. And, and also remember, say to yourself, you're allowed to be happy right now. You're allowed to celebrate this. You really are, Sharon. You're allowed to celebrate this. You're allowed to be happy. You you worked at this and um, you really showed up for yourself and mothered yourself in beautiful ways. Don't deny yourself the ability to have this joy now. You can still feel the loss and feel joy, right? Does that make sense? You can still honor the loss, right? And you did honor those. So don't forget that you did honor those babies, right? And don't forget that you know, your daughter now, you know, sweet baby Jane came through as the res representation of, of this in the flesh. And so honor that. Um, also, sadly, my mom's 10 year anniversary for passing is also Sunday. So I have that along with remembering. Yeah, it's a lot. So we got to let ourselves grieve, guys. We got to let ourselves grieve. Um, you know, I've lost people that are super close to me and I love them dearly. And I think the the best thing that has helped me is to understand that they haven't gone far um, in the spiritual perspective that physically, yes, it's hard to not have them. Um, but I still feel very connected to them from a spiritual perspective. And, um, and I think we all are, I don't think they go very far. And I think, you know, when we get a sign from them, take it, take it in, own it. They're with you. They're always with you. And, you know, on that note too, I, I have something really special for all of you guys that I want to, offer up to help you get through the weekend. It's um, it's called my Nourish Your Fertility Retreat, and we're giving it to you guys for free all weekend long, all day tomorrow and all day Sunday. It is free. It, um, gosh, several hours of content. Let me read through with you what you guys get. You get an opening um, conversation from me, a morning meditation, some cooking demonstration, tension setting workshop. You get yoga, fertility yoga. You get um, some conversations around fertility and health. You get um, mudras, uh, conversations on food and skincare and fertility. You get a discussion on opening your heart. You get a workshop on writing your new fertility story. And you get even more meditation. So again, it's free. You go to amyralp.com slash NYF. Sign up for it. It's free. Did I say it's free? It's free. It's free day tomorrow all day sunday it is free if you don't have time to watch it this weekend you can purchase it for only 49 dollars. so um head over to amyrop.com slash nyf and sign up for it it is free like i said it is free and it is my way of giving back to all of you as you manage through this challenging time um and even for any of you that are not actively trying to conceive, but are still grieving losses, whether a mother figure or miscarriages or the fertility journey, it still would be really nice for you. Even just some of the meditations. Again, you can skip around. It's free. You know, just take what you want from it. Um, oh, Sharon, you're welcome, honey. And 
Yeah, let me just make sure I got everybody's comments and questions in here. Amen to that. I agree. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, a lot of loss. I think that's it. We just need to honor the loss. And also, how can I say this? You know, and I, and I say it from a place of, I've lost really, really special people to me, like really significant people. Um, and I've had a miscarriage and, you know, and I've had losses, you know, I, I have. And so, but I don't think we have to hang on to them as our identity that we can release it a little bit and know that it's okay that we're not dishonoring the loss or dishonoring the bond or the level of love if we don't carry it in the forefront of our story if that makes sense so it's like how much almost like how much airtime am i giving these losses how much airtime am i giving the the trauma versus how much airtime am i giving the hope and the healing and all the other things that I'm allowed to celebrate in my life, right? Just because we've had loss and trauma doesn't mean we can't have joy. And to, to find that that happy medium and, and also trust, like some of this isn't your business. You know, you're you're holding on to things that are in another realm. Let it go. And then let something else come in. Because when we we can block. So just release. Trust. And I send you all lots of love. Um, this day and every day and just honor where you're at, honor your feelings. And if you feel inspired, check out the fer fertility, the nourish your fertility retreat. Again, it's free all day tomorrow and all day Sunday. You just have to go to amyrop.com slash NYF and sign up. Uh, Instagram, the link is in the bio and Facebook. We just put it up. I'm sending you all so much love and, you know, do what you can to nourish and support and mother you. You are the most important person in your life. Okay. I love you guys. And I'll see you next week.